The determination of China to become a technologically advanced economy is driven by both economic delusionment having to serve as the world's factory for low-value goods and pragmatism. With its rapid technological advancements, China is playing an increasingly important role in today's geopolitical competition. The United States as well as many of its allies and partners are concerned about how Beijing might deploy or exploit the technology in ways that are incompatible with many of its core values and interests. In contrast to the United States, which has kept the position as the world's technologically superior power for decades, China also has made massive investments and even implemented policies that have contributed significantly to the country's economic growth, military capability and international influence. China has surpassed or is on the verge of surpassing the United States in some areas, most notably in the rapid deployment of certain technologies. These dynamics are entangled with the broader context of tensions between the United States and China. U.S. alliance management difficulties, complex and shifting global supply chains, a contest for global technology standard setting, debates over the economic and technological decoupling and fast technological development in other countries, especially in East Asia, debate over the regulation of large technology firms. President Joe Biden's blueprint for the United States semiconductor industry is an ambitious attempt to set an industrial policy for a crucial sector of the economy. But it will require more funding and international support to take back chip supremacy and also preempt the rival efforts from China. China has taken decisive measures to protect itself from a broadening US technology ban, along with imports of the computer chips as well as machines that propelled them upward last year. Chinese businesses purchased nearly $32 billion worth of equipment used to manufacture computer chips from South Korea, Japan, Taiwan and other countries, a 20% increase from 2019. And with companies such as Huawei Technologies stockpiling the supplies ahead of US sanctions, imports of the computer chips increased to nearly $380 billion, accounting for nearly 80% of total Chinese imports for the year. After years of slow progress, the US has steadily limited Chinese firms' access to American technology, forcing Beijing to redouble the efforts to build a domestic chip industry. China's vulnerability in this key sector was exposed by the actions of the Trump administration and with President Joe Biden now in office, Beijing is forging ahead with a massive new plan in becoming self-sufficient in semiconductors industry. According to Dan Wang, who is a technology analyst at the Gavekel Dragonomics in Shanghai, China is reliant on imports in the short term to advance semiconductor manufacturing. China currently lacks the ability to manufacture the advanced chip-making equipment which it requires. The country is making significant investments, but the success will take more than a decade. China's chip purchases also increased significantly as a result of the pandemic-induced surge in global demand for computers and work-from-home technology. China imports a large portion of chips which are then assembled into devices ranging from smartphones to laptops and then it is exported. Imports increased by approximately 14% back in 2020 as a result of Hawaii and other technology companies stockpiling the chips ahead of impending US restrictions. The United States government placed Hawaii on a blacklist, preventing it from purchasing the chips and some other components from the American suppliers that it requires for smartphones and other communications equipment. The Trump administration has tightened the rules further to prevent any company which uses American equipment from supplying Hawaii. Not only China, but Taiwan benefited significantly from the rise in chip demand, with the orders at TSMC and other companies having increased, aiding Taiwan's economic growth surpassing Chinese growth rates for the first time in 30 years. Global shortages of chips for the car manufacturers were also a result of rising demand, forcing some of the auto plants to halt production. Demand is expected to rise this year with the Semiconductor Industry Association predicting an 8.4% increase in global chip sales this year, benefiting companies like TSMC, Intel Corporation, and Samsung Electronics. Chinese companies will also continue to purchase equipment as they also seek to produce more of their semiconductors, boosting the sales of companies such as Tokyo Electron and ASML Holding NV. According to Charlie Dai, who is a technology analyst at Forrester Research Incorporation, they expect China to take a much more balanced approach to chipset imports, sourcing the high-end chipsets which China is currently unable to manufacture from global vendors. China will also make strategic investments to speed up the localization of high-end chipset manufacturing to address the geopolitical challenge. Whether this bonanza for foreign technology companies lasts or not, 
It will all be determined by China's success and also pace in developing an independent semiconductor industry. In June, Chinese semiconductor manufacturers produced more than 1 billion chips per day, setting an all-time high and setting a new world record. Even though local chip makers are breaking records, it wasn't enough to meet the demands of Chinese manufacturers who import the huge majority of semiconductors. And according to the National Bureau of Statistics, Chinese semiconductor manufacturers, which include manufacturers of logic and memory components, have produced around 30.8 billion chips in June, representing a 43.9% increase over the same period in 2020. In May, Chinese manufacturers produced nearly 29.9 billion integrated circuits, not to mention, they literally produced around 171.2 billion chips in the first six months of the year, representing a 48.1% increase year after year. Without a doubt, producing around 30.8 billion chips in a month is a pretty significant amount. China, on the other hand, imported around 51.9 billion semiconductors in June, which means that the country could manufacture approximately 37% of its semiconductor needs. That means that even though China has a formidable installed capacity, it is not entirely self-sufficient in terms of chip supplies. According to IC Insights Global Wafer Capacity, it was disclosed that Taiwan, Japan, South Korea are the world's top three semiconductor production nations, controlling well over half of the global semiconductor output. Taiwan is home to the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, which is the world's largest contract manufacturer of logic chips, as well as United Microelectronics Corporation, several relatively small foundries, and several DRAM manufacturers, so it controls around 21.4% of global semiconductor output. Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix, which are the world's largest manufacturers of DRAM memory 3D NAND, as well as some smaller semiconductor companies, are all headquartered in South Korea. According to reports, the country's semi-firms were capable of processing up to 4.253 million 200mm equivalent wafers each month by late 2020 and held a 20.4% market share. Even though Japanese companies no longer manufacture cutting-edge logic chips, Japan is home to the largest 2D or 3D NAND production facility in the world, which is jointly operated by Kyokushia as well as Western Digital. Furthermore, companies such as Renesas continue to produce various types of chips for industries including the automotive industry and the country is home to a large number of fabs. Japanese semiconductor companies could process approximately 3.281 million 200mm equivalent wafers each month and even control approximately 15.8% of the global semiconductor production. China is the world's fourth largest chip producer and it is largely on par with Japan with a capacity of 3.184 million 200mm equivalent wafers each month and a 15.3% market share. In addition, it must be noted that the vast majority of microprocessors that are made in China are being processed using 28nm or even older nodes, and as a result, they cannot be used in devices that require truly high performance, like mainstream and high-end personal computers. Furthermore, companies such as Samsung and SK Hynix, which also have fabs in China, are not particularly interested in transferring their cutting-edge technologies to the country. With 12.6% of the global market share and a monthly capacity of about 2.633 million 200mm equivalent wafers, the United States makes it to the top 5 of the world's largest producers of chips. While it is clear that the United States lags behind Japan, China, and South Korea, it is important to remember that the American companies with fabs in their country primarily produce expensive and high-margin logic chips. But, looking at the other side of the coin, the semiconductor industry of China has made tremendous progress in the last two decades, and it shows no sign of slowing down. It is expected to grow even faster in the coming years, and it will probably replace Japan from the top three positions in the IC Insights report, either this year or the next. However, because Chinese logic manufacturers are at least five years behind the leaders of the industries such as TSMC, Intel, or Samsung Foundry, it is unlikely that the country will be able to manufacture advanced GPUs or CPUs anytime soon. Nonetheless, the local logic market is currently able to satisfy the demands of a large number of Chinese chip designers. Do you think China will be able to produce 1 trillion chips per day? Let us know down in the comment section below. Well, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to see more content like this one, consider turning the post notification on so that you get notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks for watching guys and with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!